Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the community table. This is our second conversation of the year, and we are so excited to be back here again every month, all year long at Beyond Type 1, focusing on crucial issues faced by the entire diabetes community. Tonight's no different. We're talking about finding support as spouses and significant others. I'm Jordan, the Vice President of Mission and Programs at Beyond Type 1, and I will hand it off momentarily to an incredible group of panelists. But before we get started, I just want to thank all of you who are joining us tonight in Zoom and on Facebook Live, as well as those who make our conversations at the community table a possibility. Community table is presented by the ADA by Beyond Type 1 Collab and the JDRF Beyond Type 1 Alliance and made possible support from Abbott Diabetes Care, Dexcom, Lilly Diabetes, Sanofi, Tandem, and Vertex. While you're watching tonight, if you have questions for this group, we are gonna do our best to take those later on in the discussion. So please feel free to drop them into the chat if you're on Zoom or into the comments if you're on Facebook, and we're gonna do our best to get to those. For now, I'm going to ask our amazing, amazing panelists to go ahead and come on video. And I'm gonna hand it off to Ali, who's going to moderate this conversation tonight. Ali, take it away. Hi everyone, how you guys doing? My name is Ali Abdul Karim. And uh, welcome to the community table. Uh, we're here on behalf of Beyond Type 1. And we're going to have the conversation, the very important conversation of uh, finding support as spouses and significant others. And we're super excited to get going. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Ali. I've been living with diabetes for six years now. I got uh, diagnosed at the awkward stage of 18 years old last year in high school. And, um, and it's been it's been a fun journey slash lots of learning on the road. And, and along the way, I also created uh, something on YouTube called the Diabetes Daily Hustle, where I was documenting my every single day of eating, working out, you know, just going through everything with diabetes. So I'm super excited to be here. And um, let me go ahead and uh, introduce everyone else here. Um, I have next to me, it's just my uh, significant other in this conversation. <laughs> She's been living with type one uh, and five she'll tell years. you five years. He actually is wrong. He's been living it with it for seven years. Seven years. Okay. Well, I guess I got my numbers older wrong. Every year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, please uh, introduce yourself, Tharika Chabra. Hi, everybody. I'm Tharika Chabra. I have been living for di with diabetes for five years. I was diagnosed at 24 years old. So I was a little older um, and I am now going to school to be a dietitian in hopes to be working with diabetic patients, children, pediatrics. I really don't know yet. Um, the world is big and there's a lot to do out there. But yes, I am excited to be here as well. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, and next we have uh, Samantha. Uh, hopefully, I'm not saying your last name wrong. Brzozowski, if I said that oh, right. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's tricky. <laughs> I don't even ask yourself. people to spell it. Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Samantha Brzozowski. I am the wife of someone living with type 1 diabetes. Um, my husband, Jerry Brzozowski, uh, he too was diagnosed at 18, his last year of high school. Um, and wow. straight into college, he went and kind of figured things out on his own. We have uh, three kids, two of which are two daughters, both live with type one diabetes too. So, so I am basically at this point, because my son is older and out of the house, the only functioning pancreas besides <laughs> our dogs in the house. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm sure that's like a journey for him when he, when he had that, uh, at that age, like it's so it's it's overwhelming it's it's such an awkward stage and i yeah. i mean props um, yeah thank you for sharing samantha i appreciate it sure. um and and next we have uh luis felipe paz hopefully i said that right too <laughs> please introduce yourself i think you're muted luis there you go oh perfect hey okay hi how are you how is everybody um. <laughs> So my name is Luis. Uh, I, I am from Mexico and uh, currently living in the United States in Texas. I have been uh, living with diabetes for close to 11 years. I was diagnosed for my 30th birthday, so it was one hell of a present. Um, and I also care for, for someone with diabetes. My wife, uh, she's 26 years with diabetes now. So I mean, it's, it's, it's been one hell of a ride. It's, it's a great experience. And well, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to be here and share everything we've learned so far. That's, I mean, 26 years, that is not little compared to 
seven years and five <laughs> like that's baby years uh yeah thank you for sharing that Luis. that's amazing i'm Thanks really so happy much. you're here thank you um a couple uh, uh questions to kind of get going um i actually Luis already answered part of it and um i guess i'll start with you samantha um I, I, I think that would relate to, uh, I'm sorry, no, let me, let me go to Luis on this one since it's no, go ahead. more on this sure. one. How long, so you said your partner has been living with diabetes for 26 years. So at what yes. age, at what age uh, was your partner diagnosed? She was diagnosed uh, at 16, more or less. Okay. So yeah, yeah, pretty much young, much younger age, almost similar to, I guess, 18, that kind of high school range. Yes. And uh, when did you find out your partner had uh, diabetes? Was it like early on in, you know, meeting, meeting your partner? It, it, it was, it's actually a, a pretty funny uh, story uh, because we met through, I mean, when I, when I was uh, diagnosed, uh, a mutual friend, uh, I, I live, I live in a, in a neighboring city for, from where she lived, right? So we had a, a common friend. We, I, I never met her before. So, so she told me like, you should go see uh, this awesome nutritionist that lives in, in this other city because she has diabetes and she knows everything about, uh, well, how to, how to eat well and she's gonna make you feel so much better. And I was, I was just barely uh, had been diagnosed. So I was, I was kind of lost, I was feeling lost. And so I said, of course, I mean, and, and I traveled to this neighboring city and well, then this nutritionist comes out and I said, well, I like that girl, I, she's, she's really pretty, but I mean, I, this is not professional. I'm here to see her as my nutritionist, of course. And, and yeah, and when I left, I was like, oh my God, I really like her. So uh, the next time I was, uh, I was in for a, for a consultation, uh, I tried to, to I mean, I, I spoke about the diabetes and all that. And uh, as soon as I could, I put it out of the way and I started talking about other stuff like, like, like a regular conversation. And eventually uh, I, I asked her out and she said, well, I, I cannot be, I cannot go out with you because you're my patient. So that is unprofessional. And I said, okay, okay, perfect. Then I, I'm, I'm never going back with you uh, for a consultation or for whatever. I mean, you are officially fired. And then, yeah, she, she, uh, she, she said yes to, to going out with me. And then we started, uh, well, I mean, the, the rest is history. And, and uh, close to one year after that, we got married. So, wow. yeah, so I, I, so going back to the, to the question, um, I found out she had diabetes even before I met her. So, yeah. That's amazing. That's a beautiful story. I mean, Lake, Thank congratulations you. to you guys' marriage. Yeah. <laughs> but I Thank love you it. so much. That's amazing. Um, I want to serve us back to Samantha. Um, so you told me something that really, uh, it stuck out to me and you were saying the only ones in the household with functioning pancreas as you said was yes. your Us, just me and uh, our our two dogs okay um my my son uh he's older he's actually um in the marine so he's oh, wow. he's not here so yeah it's it's i'm the only one not on insulin wow that's <laughs> i've I, insulin. <laughs> i've never i've never heard of anything like that i mean i i guess i'll i'll ask you the question like when like, how did you find out your partner uh, had diabetes? Was it during, you know, you guys first time meeting or how was that? Yeah. So we um, actually worked where we, both of us are in animal medicine. And so one of the animal hospitals that he worked for was bought out by the corporate hospital that I worked for. And mm -hmm. so he merged over to the practice that I was at and, um, I mean, he, he was wearing an insulin pump. I was familiar enough to know that that's what that was and that he was type one diabetic, mm -hmm. um, but not, you know, the nitty gritty details of what it takes to survive daily as a type one diabetic. Um, that came later and uh, he, he was persistent too and wanting to go out on a date. And so... <laughs> we uh, pretty much right off the bat, we hit it off. We were great friends and there was just a lot of chemistry there. So it was, it didn't take much. He didn't really have to work that hard. I so, love that. That's yeah. Wait, yeah. So what, what were your like 
first thoughts, I guess I'll get into that. When you first, um, you first found out, like, was there any kind of like, what, what could you think of? Honestly, I mean, at the time, this was back in, uh, gosh, 2003, I think. So there, well, there for him going in and seeing an endocrinologist, there wasn't a lot of talk about, um, you know, children and marriage and things like that. When you go in to see your endocrinologist, you're there for your A1C, your prescriptions, and maybe some nutrition, and then you're done. So it, it wasn't anything that was ever on his discussion list, but also I will say that very, unless you saw his insulin pump, you probably wouldn't know that he was type one diabetic. We lived on our street for almost seven years before anybody and our neighbors were very close with knew that he was type one. When our daughter was diagnosed, our first daughter, they were like, oh my goodness, is it running the family? <laughs> and I remember thinking, well, yeah, <laughs> their dad, I guess, I mean, it's not that it was anything he kept a secret. He's just, he manages his life and diabetes very well. I mean, he never lets anything stop him and he never skips a beat. He makes the best of every moment of every single day. And so I think I took that and kind of ran with it too. Like, you know, this is great. He does everything he wants to do and it hasn't been any kind of obstacle that I was aware of. He was very good at, you know, hiding those lows or those highs, not really hiding, just managing them. Right, right. I mean, you've seen it all. I mean, the, the whole family. That's, yeah. That's, no. the, that's a special, a special story and a special life to share, you know, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Samantha. Um, I, I'm going to look at my partner beside <laughs> me and ask her uh, one of these questions. Um, so I, I think she, we, she did mention she is my significant other. And I'm going to ask you, Tarika, at what point did you find, uh, find <laughs> found out I had uh, type 1 diabetes? I, when I was diagnosed, um, obviously he knows the story, but when I was diagnosed, I was just, I mean, when you're 24, I was turning 25 a few months later. It's a whole new community, so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to move forward with life. So I went to social media to find um, other type 1 diabetics or people living with type 1 diabetes, sorry. And um, I came across his page. <laughs> um, I lived in Missouri at the time, so I don't even know how I came across someone in who lives in California, his page. But so I followed him. He was funny. We had similar interests aside from diabetes. And um, I mean, we just responded to each other's story and I was already moving here to go to school. So the rest is history. Yep. <laughs> so I found out basically because I was searching for it. Yeah, you find you find what you're seeking. Um, but uh, yeah, so I mean, that that's, uh, that's my girlfriend, Tarika. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I want to get into uh, the subject on, on uh, learning and supporting. And uh, I'm going to throw the ball to you, Luis, actually. Um, sure. So when you started learning more about your uh, significant others, uh, diabetes, like what, what were some questions you that came to you that were really important? Um, well, I think one of the main things that I didn't know about, I mean, I, I, I knew the general things regarding how to care for yourself and how to care for someone with diabetes. But what I didn't know about was the insulin pump. She had one and I had never even seen one in my, in my life. So that's one of the main things that, that I started learning from, from her, you know, like, like how to use it and how, how she did it and her bolus and, and how she managed her diabetes because she managed perfectly fine with that thing, you know? And um, I, was, I was still, I was misdiagnosed. And, and, and it's something that I have to say because I was still uh, taking just oral medication when I should have been on an insulin uh, uh, scheme, you know? So uh, it, it, I, I think I, I was misdiagnosed and I lived like that for like seven, eight years. So until like a few years ago, I finally got to, to getting my own insulin pump. So I already knew many, many things from it, uh, from living with her and from learning from her every day. So that's, that's one of the things that, that she taught me most about, you know? Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, you, you got all the firsthand experience as well, you know, uh, jumping, yeah. thinking about you know, the other side of Samantha, she's seen 
a lot of that. And then you're also seeing it from, you know, like you said, the insulin pump, the bolus, the, the whole thing, A to Z, you know, um, I would, uh, another, another important, uh, topic, I guess you could say would, is the resources. Like, did you guys reach out to any or have any resources that you guys found helpful? Um, Samantha. Honestly, um, Jerry was where he was diagnosed was a very small town. And because he was um, leaving that small town to go straight into college, he really there, we didn't have, there wasn't social media back then. So he didn't have anybody to reach out. He was too old for diabetes camps. Um, so he was kind of just self-sufficient and on his own, which is probably why um, he was the way he was when I met him. He was just used to managing this as like the ghost behind him and nobody really being involved or intrigued or asking questions. Um, so it was not until our daughter Vivian was diagnosed that I really started to realize how isolating it can be. Cause I, I'm never gonna know what it's like truly, even with everybody in my house living with type one, I, I still am not ever going to know what it's like to live with type one. So I realized pretty quickly that he needed to get connected to, to other people. And so, I mean, I told him almost right away, like, I'm going to start looking on Facebook. There has to be groups out there, young adults, parents, right. you know, I think that you need to get involved in the community of people. And I know I definitely need to because I need other moms support. So it took until our daughter was diagnosed. <laughs> Right, right. And now, yeah. I mean, he's connected with so many. I mean, we've had a lot of people come and stay at our house. It's kind of been coined Hotel Brzozowski. Like, there's a lot of <laughs> type one people in the community that have come and stayed with us. And he's really enjoyed that. And it's also helped him better manage himself because there were things, you know, that he didn't know as well. He, he wore an insulin pump. There were so many other great resources out there available to him that he just didn't know. Yeah, yeah, that that's that's actually a very uh, important thing you said. I I was you know digging into so much research when I got diagnosed, and that was kind of like the whole premise of my uh, the Diabetes Daily Hustle on YouTube. I would learn something and share it, and you know experiment with it. But when I met other diabetics that had been you know diagnosed for twenty years plus, they were like, "Wait, what is that? What's pre bolus?" And you know, it's, it's not to knock anyone. I mean that that happens you know I, I didn't have a life you know diabetes was the only thing I cared about so it's very uh it's a it's actually a, it's a lot of people that have had diabetes for years you know they're still learning uh still learning things but um to Tarika what um what were what were your sources that you found were pretty helpful um Instagram of course was very helpful for me like I said, well, just kind of like your husband, I wasn't diagnosed in a small town. I was diagnosed in St. Louis, Missouri, but um, for some reason, they're just not open about it out there. And um, moving here, well, I moved to San Diego, uh, maybe a year and a half after diagnosis and everyone's open about it out here. So many meetups and whatnot. So that was very, very resourceful. Um, we just, we, we've been wanting to do an adult camp. We're thinking about it um, coming up in May, I believe. But also um, resources are my boyfriend and my dad, they read books. I'm not a book reader. So books are really out there to help you. He always says to me, um, you cut the learning curve when you one talk to an experience or just anybody with diabetes. When you have conversations, you're always learning. You're learning from people everywhere you meet. But um, so meetups are really helpful in that sense, too. But books really cut that learning curve as well. Yeah. So that was my resource. Yeah. I mean, everyone has a has a different method of learning. You know, I, I, I used to hate reading, actually. But I think the the uh, the goals and what I wanted made me like it. But I, at the end of the day, I'm a video. I'm a video person. I like visual. I like going to YouTube, you know, thus the YouTube channel. <laughs> um, but Luis, actually. Um, what were some challenges that came with, um, you know, being that you were a partner with someone who had diabetes? Like, what, what were some, if you, if you could share? Um, I don't know. I mean, the, just 
you could say that that I I already knew about the difficult part of diabetes because I had to endure myself with diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but I mean I knew I I thought I knew what 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 it felt like to have, for example, a hypoglycemia or a hyperglycemia. And, and I used to know, but I had never seen it on somebody else. And that's when, that's, that's the moment when you actually say like, whoa, I am no fun when I have hypoglycemia, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, I I, and, so I, and I see, <laughs> and I see myself <laughs> reflected in, in her and she does as well in me. So uh, that, that that's the challenge but it's also one of the most rewarding things about both of us having diabetes you know yeah can I cut in really quick yeah go ahead yeah um, please <laughs> just because I relate so much and because I'm the brat in the relationship my hypos and hypers matter <laughs> yeah <laughs> but so being with someone else like you have to realize and it's so helpful that like Luis, we can relate to our significant others. If I know he's um, has a low blood sugar, high blood sugar, I'm like, oh, I know what that feels like. So I'm going to back up, you know, we can relate and we understand it. Um, so it's just so funny. It's like, oh yeah, you have that too. Okay, fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll baby you for a little bit. Yeah, there's that pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Samantha actually, um, on, on the topic of uh, burnout, what what have like, I'm sure you've seen, you know, your kids or maybe even your husband uh, go through diabetic burnout. What are some ways that you help support them, you know, when diabetes really, really can be, you know, tough in those times? I think, I know, honestly, I can only think of one specific moment in my husband. He's a pretty resilient dude. And he, he definitely just kind of rolls with the punches and no matter what is thrown in life. Um, but he, there was a moment we had gone, and this was before we had children and he had gone down to South Padre Island and he, um, his Medtronic pump was splash proof, but not like ocean hard wave hits mm -hmm. you proof. Mm -hmm. And uh, back then prior to, kids and I also you know learned the hard way too he he didn't travel with a lot of extra supplies back then you know we weren't that far from home and but still far enough to to be a serious issue so I I remember him being very frustrated at the fact that we everything had to kind of halt because his insulin pump stopped he didn't have you know needles and syringes to do injections um that's really the only time. I mean, he, he's one of a handful of um, pilots in the United States that has his commercial pilot's license. Wow. So he really perseveres through about anything and everything, which has worked out wonderful for my girls because I really am not knock on wood seeing them really experience burnout. Maybe if you know they have an ouchie Dexcom application or pump they cry and get upset and make comments like you know I wish I didn't have diabetes anymore yeah but you know I'm sure you guys probably go through that too I yes. mean believe it or uh, not at any age I believe yeah, yeah. Um, any age so when you see like a, a younger person it's like you're doing good if you're anything you're experiencing at that age you know I was uh I was 20 and in the kitchen eating so much food to emotionally satisfy myself and I was hurting myself and putting on weight and trying to also create this channel for a community um confused you know and I was just like I'm, I'm done with diabetes I don't my whole thing was I just didn't want it to degrade my health more than any other person in the earth that was non-diabetic I wanted to strive for better so I'm sure with you said your, your husband was a, is a pilot right Mm -hmm. He's a veterinarian and a pilot, so he yeah. Just so he's uh he's he's on track. If if you told me he's a pilot, I already <laughs> knew he's uh he has a rigid schedule with his diabetes. Um, yeah, so that's that's amazing. You know that that's oh. perseverance. You know, um, so let's get to the uh, topic on communication. You know, this is actually very. I would say this is the meat and potatoes of this whole discussion. You know, and having those tough conversations when things are, you know you want to relay something to your partner. So 
Um, I'm going to jump to um, Luis. Uh, what is what is your um, communication rank on like how important it is between you and your partner when it comes to the subject of diabetes? It's it's the most important thing, and it's also the the easiest thing for us. I, and and I, as I'm sure it is for you guys because we truly understand how important it is to, to just let the other one know exactly how you're feeling because you know, he will understand how you're feeling. Yeah. And, and it's different for, I imagine it's different for people that maybe one of them has diabetes, but the other one doesn't. And sometimes, and, and going back a little bit to the, to the burnout uh, topic, we feel like we truly know what being burnout means. And I know what she's going through and she, she knows what, what I'm going through. And it's, it's not like if someone, uh, if someone you know has a disease or something and you say, oh my God, I'm so sorry, but you don't know what he's going through because you don't have it. But in this case, we know exactly what being fed up and being just tired of diabetes in some days feels like. So you can completely relate, but at the same time, we, we, we do push ourselves to be completely open and never try to minimize it or downplay it. I mean, just be completely open. And, and I think it's the most important part uh, of, of our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so important because I, when I think about Tarika and myself, you know, every other conversation that we have, you know, let's say we're arguing about something petty or something is uh, in terms of communication, like we disagree on when it comes to diabetes, we're, I would say, in my opinion, we're pretty like level headed and, and like, like, oh, okay, I get you. No, that's fair. Okay. Even if it's something like, I think she needs to start filling her prescriptions more and getting on top of that. Like I told her, hey, you know, you just finished your exam. Uh, you know, I just wanted to mention it to you. You should call your pharmacy and see what, you know, because the insurance is changing up right now. You should call and see what's going on. And she was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I didn't do that today. <laughs> I was like, that, that's OK. <laughs> that's fine, because I understand, you know, it's frustrating. Go call your doctor and then your doctor rejects the prescription. Then you got to get a prior authorization. Then you go back and forth like I get it, you know, so that that in, in that relationship, you know, I mean, I'm sure you understand Samantha as well. Like when there's certain conversations you talk to your husband, you're like, you know, you don't need to explain. I, I, I get you. Yeah. you know? I just let him talk. I, when he has his lows, he, he's, he's really, I, I wouldn't really be able to tell much from highs, but he doesn't, you know, he's pretty tightly controlled because of his pilot's license. He tries right. to keep, you know, but when he's low, I see it before words even come out of his mouth. I know it's coming. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so I just stubborn. take it all with a grain of salt, you know, yeah. brush it off my shoulder. And yeah, I mean, he'll, you know, the tape measure doesn't open right. It's the tape measure's fault. I just leave it. <laughs> You're right. It is. Right. Measure. Yep, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ride. I mean, she even knows some days when I'm like laughing too much, which is really weird. And like, kind of like goofy. She's like, are you low? I'm like, <laughs> Maybe I might be. I get a little goofy. I get irritated when I'm high though. So it's kind of a give and take. <laughs> Wait, uh, really quick. I wanted to say something when you were talking about burnout, Louise, um, and the communication. Another thing that often happens in our relationship is I get burnt out quick, more easily than him, I would say. And I don't think it's maybe because I haven't coped with it fully, but um, so like if I don't have a device, like if I don't have a Dexcom on or I'm like, oh, I have to dose, but I don't want to get up. We're MDI. So I don't want to get up and dose or whatever. He's like, why? And I'm like, because I don't want to. <laughs> and he's like, OK, he knows I will. Yeah. I take care of myself at the end of the day. Yeah. But like simple as that, like, I don't want to. I don't want to right now. I don't want to have to think about it right now. Then yeah. he understands. Yeah. And, and I, and I feel like I've, I've come to understand that my belief is diabetes doesn't change us. It just like, it amplifies who we are. So even if it wasn't diabetes for Tarika, it would be something else. Like, let's say she had to turn in something really late. And I mean, she's good at turning in stuff, but it's just an example. <laughs> she would be like, I don't want to, you know, it's just more of like, that's bringing out that personality. Um, but to, uh, I want to, I want to jump on and further on, onto conversations, um so let me ask uh 
Samantha, have you had some like tough conversations with your partner when it comes to diabetes? I, I know you, I know you said, you know, he's in tight control, you know, and you know, rightfully so. Yeah, I would say when our daughter was diagnosed, I, and this was before he had a private pilot's license, which isn't, you know, too hard to get. And I mean, I think they give him to like 16 year olds, but, <laughs> um, you know, he, so his, you know, tight control wasn't that big of a deal. And I started listening to podcasts and going to events with like JDRF and such and listening to other people talk about how they manage their children's diabetes and A1Cs. And, you know, I never make numbers a thing for my children. It's based off of how they feel. And I want them to understand that. But for me personally, it was a numbers thing and trying to get the best control that I could for them. And so when I saw that I could accomplish it for our daughter, who was two, who, oh yes, I want to eat. No, I don't want to eat, but I've already dosed. So when I saw that I was able to do that, I, um, I did kind of mention to him, I think you could do a better job. I want you to be here for your kids and I want you to be healthy for your kids. Yeah. And so it wasn't an easy conversation to have. I mean, I would equate it to him coming up and being like, you know, you've put on a few extra pounds, maybe you should be back. <laughs> But he's, uh, he's just a great guy who's very open to it. And he agreed and he wanted that for himself too. It was just a matter of the resources and knowing really what was out there. Adult, um, in my opinion, adult endocrinology is uh, tough for y'all living with type one. There's not a lot of great doctors out there um, that truly get it. And so it was a, a matter of him learning from the community that he could do better. I just we, I did it the pediatric way. I was like, well, if I can do it for her, you can do it for you. And he did, he was very receptive to it. And he's very grateful for that because he's able to get his commercial pilots. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a noble conversation, a tough one, but a, I would say personally speaking, a beautiful conversation, you know, something you want higher and better for your partner. You know, I think about my parents, you know, when I, used to try to convince my mom to work out I'm like mom you need to work out you know I want you around you know that's the premise of the conversation you know like right. and now she's uh now she's working out you know I call I'm like hey what are you doing I'm like oh, I'm just getting into the gym I'm like I'm, I'm happy for you. you know that's good that's that's what I want to hear um Luis uh, I want to ask you have you had to set any boundaries or expectations when it comes to diabetes management now this question is kind of it's kind of a, a unique one because, you know, you have diabetes, so does uh, your partner. So yes. what, do you have expectations for yourself and how to see your partner, you know, help you out in that sense? Or how, how do you go about that? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, the, the expectation is always to try and be better than we are right now. And we are always uh, striving to, 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 to be in, in better, I don't want to say control because I don't like the term, but in the end, you, you try to end up controlling the, your, your, your condition, right? And, and I don't know. I mean, she, she, she always, uh, she helps me uh, to be, you know, uh, to try and, try and be better, but she also tries to keep me down to earth with, with what is uh, human, uh, humanly possible to do, you know? So, um, I don't know. I mean, I wish I could say more, but I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a, that's like as simple as that. That's very, you know, effective answer. You know, you want to make sure to be as healthy as possible and not to, cause when you set a standard that's below in diabetes, then you start living a life of chaos, you know, where you start going low more often you start forgetting things you start feeling anxious and things that you just don't want um and i'm gonna yeah. turn the mic to you onto this question um what what um what like expectations do you have when it comes to your diabetes and myself you know at, at least a, a partner that has diabetes and your partner that does as well 
So we don't really set boundaries and expectations for one another, but I mean, at the end of the day, we expect our, each other to not like, you know, disregard the fact that we are living with this condition that we do have to be our own pancreas, you know, like don't just neglect yourself and your health. Honestly, I think we're really good at making sure we stay alive. Um, so I don't, this is a tough one for me. I don't really make expectations because we just make sure to keep ourselves going. <laughs> Right. That's 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 the same way I feel. Uh, I know I could this, see you were struggling because I was question. thinking too. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think we but, keep but boundaries. Something that 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 I I I, I push her with is, uh, for example, the exercising. You no, know? because I am I am super uh, intense when it comes to to uh, having certain things to do, and I I am like a square. She says she says I'm a square. <laughs> and that I don't want, I, I don't want to go out of the boundaries and all that. But since the very moment that I, I was diagnosed, I said, okay, so I am never going to get rid of, I asked my doctor, like, okay, so I have diabetes. I am never getting rid of it. No, you're not. Okay. So what do I have to do? You have to work out. You have to start eating better. You have to, okay. And then I, I just, I started doing it and I have never, uh, I tried to never miss a beat and, and I try to work out every day and all that and i'm super intense so i i sometimes try to make her do things like that but i i, I am also glad that she's not like that you know because yeah. it would be like it would be an explosive if i am ocd and i am all those things i am glad she's not but i mean it's, it's one of the things that i set boundaries or i set expectations for myself and then sometimes i want her to to meet those expectations. Like, why wouldn't you want to work out every day and right. come with me to the gym and, and all that? <laughs> and she's like, man, it's, it, it's not like that for me. And I, and, and yeah, I understand. I have to understand because she's, she's her own person. She's an individual and, and I have to respect it. Yeah. Every day is a lot, by the way. Yeah. Every day, every day is a lot. Luis, you gotta have rest days. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're intense about it. I mean, I, I believe you. And, and like, that's actually a good thing. You said, you said that you are glad it's not both of you guys that way. Cause you know, yeah. it's always gotta be uh, a yin and a yang. She loves to plan and organize before I met her, I was the same exact way, but soon as, you know, she's next to me or in my life, I'm, I let go. I'm like, Oh, I don't even know what's happening. Okay. Yeah. That's just part of, part of the balance. Um, but thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, let me go ahead and wrap up. Um, so Samantha, uh, you know, this question is more about, I guess some of these questions are with someone with diabetes and then also with just your partner who has diabetes. Um, if someone, some, let's say someone's watching right now and they're newly dating someone with diabetes what are three pieces of advice that you would give them so I've actually been asked this question a lot by young single people who I've met in the type one community um if if that was something in the conversation that Jerry first brought up to me that was a turnoff or something that I was like oh whoa no you know it wasn't for me, but I also, my mind just doesn't work that way. My heart just doesn't work that way. I don't see somebody for anything other than this person I'm having this great conversation and connection with. I mean, I, I personally tell them to be open and honest because I think if you are going to be with somebody, you wanna know from the get-go how they're going to feel about the situation. Because I think that's not only going to tell you, well, this person's probably not going to hand me a juice box in the middle of the night. This person might not also be here for other things that might happen in your life. Like, you know, every day is not a guarantee. Things happen. Take vows. It's death. Part. It's sickness and in health. And I think that you should find out if that partner is going to be that way from the very beginning, no matter where you meet them. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you need to, you know, whip out your insulin pump on the table and be like, well, before we even say hello, yeah. <laughs> I have this thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I do think if you feel like there's a connection there that you should, as, as soon as you're comfortable expressing your feelings and telling them that you are living with type one diabetes, you should. I take that too for my kids. I don't ever want them 
to feel like they need to hide it from anybody because they won't be accepted, no matter if they're five or if they're 18 or they're 25. They, you know, we, we as a family truly do, you know, we live every single day, we roll with the punches. There are highs, there are lows, there are all of those things because like Louise said, control is kind of a bad word. It's hard for me. I, management, I guess, is, yeah. you know, but you're never going to be perfect at it. I mean, I have one sitting at 240 right now and the other one's at 110. So, and yeah. I honestly don't know what they could have gotten into. So yeah. <laughs> that's just life. That's how yeah. life is. Yeah. I mean, you're, so, you're talking about the real the day-to-day -day right now you just told yeah. us I mean, that's yep. that, that's amazing thank you for sharing that I really appreciate that um because I mean it really goes to say like if someone is and this is a, a lot of people I've actually I've heard this so many different times if someone is rejecting you based off your diabetes or you know whatever it is it's it's not really th that's a good thing because then you have an indicator of who that character is early on you know you always want to you always want to fail fast so that way you know what's wrong and then you can adjust so that's a that's a you know that's really important um Luis a, this is a <laughs> it's a really uh, interesting question <laughs> assuming that your partner is watching uh what is uh what is one thing you want them to know well she is <laughs> and I, I, just, I just heard her laugh from the other room because oh, <laughs> nice pressure uh, of course i mean i, I don't i don't let a, a single day go by without telling her that that she is everything you know Hello. and and i don't know and, and i don't know if, if i've told her this like i don't know if i would be alive if it wasn't for her because i don't know where diabetes could have taken me if I didn't have her because I look up to her like uh, all every day I look up to her and and I have learned so much so much from her and I have also pushed myself uh, into being better every day because of her so I mean that that's it that's what I want to say I love it I love it. that's amazing I love your spirit and your energy um and yeah I mean that that's that's amazing I'm I'm going to turn to you. Ali, assuming that your partner is watching. <laughs> Am I? What is something you would like your partner to know? <laughs> Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Um, that's a really good one. I, I would say, I would say that you are your own harsh, most harsh critic and to, to just, just never stop you know always always keep going that's all you know that's all about the day-to-day -day. so <laughs> that's my answer to you <laughs> um let's go ahead and get some questions from everyone um let's let's go ahead i saw some i saw some really good questions actually um this is from sarah sarah thanks you, thank you for sharing this question um sam this one's for you so um this is a really good question, actually. When you need time to recharge while taking care of other family members with type 1 diabetes, um, you know, being a mother, she says, is, is tough enough. You know, how, how do you recharge when it comes to all that? You know, there's always the attention to the diabetics. You know, what about yourself? There is. That is a good question. I think that um, caregiver burnout is a very real thing, too. And, you know, something that is associated with a lot of guilt. So therefore we don't ever talk about it um, because, you know, I, I mean, I, I'll be the first to admit who am I? I? I'm here, I'm healthy, my pancreas works. I don't have to account for everything I put into my mouth or every emotion that I feel. So I shouldn't beat myself up because I'm tired. Um, but it is a real thing. We're human too, we're not robots. And so we do need that kind of downtime I will say that um, now that my daughters are just a little bit older, I have a great nurse. So I do get, you know, like six hours a day where there's a lot of texting between her and I, that gives me a little bit of a break though, because they're not physically there. I'm not physically, you know, managing them. It kind of relieves a little bit. Um, Jerry's wonderful too. Um, we, we do take nights where I am not on Dexcom duty. 
Um, and he is. I'm not going to lie and say there are times where I hear alarms and he doesn't. And so the, you know, foot kick under the bed, like, get up. <laughs> I love it. Next come watch break. It's like, all right, you're off duty right now. I love yeah. it. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sam, so actually, I, I want to ask you this question as well. The same question I asked Luis, uh, assuming that your partner is watching, what is uh, one thing you want them to know? Oh, um, that is tough. It's tough to not get emotional over that one. Um, I would say probably that I'm incredibly proud of how he shows our daughters how to live beyond. It, it really, I've seen or heard from a lot of parents whose kids are struggling and I'm grateful that I have him to show our girls firsthand what it's like to live with type one, understand those emotions and share that with them. I'm, I'm very grateful to him for that. How we are as a family daily. I'm very proud of that. That's amazing. That's, that's beautiful. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, another question for you guys, actually, I want to ask uh, Luis this question. Uh, Luis, I don't know if you're really into uh uh, diabetes books but do you recommend any uh, books for significant others in this context hmm. you know what I am not uh, much of a reader I mean books I don't usually read books most of the the things that I learn are from what my wife knows and what she likes to read <laughs> I love it <laughs> and, and also most of my resources uh, are online stuff that I that I like to that I like to read. Uh, Beyond Type One is a fantastic resource that I that I really that I really like. But um, yeah, no, I'm gonna fail you there because I. I don't... <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I I actually uh, no, you did not fail me. That that, that was so many different resources. You know, I actually need to get back on on reading more. Uh, but Samantha, do you have you read any books in this uh, topic of significant others and diabetes? I did. I'm a huge Audible podcast listener. Nice. So I instantly, I mean, because I'm constantly moving. So sitting down, when you're a mom, just in general, you don't get to like really read books much anymore. Yeah. There's, so. there's actually a book I read and it was actually sponsored by the ADA or co written by someone in the uh, ADA. And it was about actually supporting it. This is for everyone listening. Um, for supporting someone with diabetes. So I would look up something on the ADA section. I, I can't think of the title. I'm not I'm being yeah, no I'm help. Too. Yeah, it's like a brown grayish book. And I don't know. I mean, there, there's a good amount out there. Um, but Sam, I, I, I forgot to ask you, we have another one for you. And it's uh, when you and your uh, husband, uh, were, were you guys surprised that you found out your, your kids were diabetic? So that's a question I get a lot too. Um, I've had some, some people ask me the question that if it's a tough question and I, I, I think that it's something that probably a lot of people living with type one as adults, young adults that are going to get married or are married are nervous about. And it's hard for me to answer it because I, you know, I have my children, I love my children. There's nothing that I would change, but they have asked me the question of, you know, would you have, if you could go back, would you have kids again? If you knew that that was a possibility, if you asked me the very day that my daughter was diagnosed, um, I was, you know, gutted because, uh, Jerry, this wasn't something like I just said earlier, it's not something that your adult endocrinologist walks up and says, hey, do you plan to have kids one day? Here are your odds of your children developing type one. I can wholeheartedly 100% say that whether I knew or not, I wouldn't change a thing. There, I wouldn't change a thing. I think it's silly to even question it. If you want children, you should have children. They're great most of the time. And so you should have children, have a family. It shouldn't hold you back. Is the possibility there? Yeah, but so are a lot of other possibilities for a lot of other things. Yeah. And especially in this, you know, day and age, the majority of the families that I meet, there wasn't even a single person that they could trace in their family living with type one. So I 
it would not have hindered. It didn't hinder me in the beginning, even though it wasn't really something that we talked about. We both wanted children. It wasn't anything that we were like, this is the risk associated with it. Yeah. yeah. I think it's something very personal though, to each person. Sure. Cause I have met some people that that's just not something that they want. And that makes me kind of sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's the reality of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually met someone and, um, she was telling me she didn't want any kids. She had three different autoimmune diseases, one of them being, you know, diabetes. And, you know, I just looked at her and I was like, part of me was sad because I was like, I mean, look at you. You're you're amazing. You know, there's nothing that stopped you. I mean, I, I it's it's really selfless, too. I, I get it. But something actually personal between uh, Tarika and myself, you know, we've talked about if kids are something in the future between two diabetics it's very appropriate to also think about adopting an, a kid with diabetes. You know, there's, there's that as well, where you're asking for that responsibility and, and adopting a child that lives with diabetes with two, two different uh, viewpoints of parents with living with diabetes. Um, it, it's definitely a subject that's, it's needs more attention. I would say um, a couple more questions. Um, uh this is a good one, actually. Um, Luis, what is the hardest thing um, to see with your partner having diabetes? Uh, like, are you afraid of something? I guess they're, they're asking, I guess, seeing possibly? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, for example, uh, last week, she was worried that she, she was, uh, she had some, some sort of uh, like shadows in her in her sight and she was very worried that it could be something related to diabetes so during a trip to mexico that we did we went to see uh the eye doctor and um it turned out that everything was perfectly fine you know but i saw that fear in her eyes and that is very very difficult you know because uh, i usually think about potential uh consequences or or anything derived from diabetes on my own, but I, I don't usually speak speak up about it. Uh, I just kind of just roll with the punches and I say, well, what will be, will, will be, you know, but thinking about her being worried about something that, I mean, it, it really, it, it's really hard, uh, especially because she's, she's had diabetes for 25, 26 years. So that's a lot of time. And um, well, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a very valid, uh, that's a very valid point, you know, so it's, it's a good amount of time, but yeah. you know, in, in terms of conversation, that's important today is, you know, what can we do today? You know, and I'm sure you and your partner do the best possible job you guys can. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys are doing, doing an amazing job. So that fear, that fear is always going to come and go and we just have to learn how to you know, act on it. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, and and I, I see, actually, yeah, that, that's a good, great question for Samantha. Thank you for reminding me. Samantha, what about yourself? Uh, you know, is there anything like a hard thing to see with your partner having diabetes or something you're afraid of seeing? Probably uh, the fear of, you know, vision loss in the future because of he, he's so passionate about flying airplanes. I mean, his first love is animal medicine, but you know, um, having his pilot's license taken away from him would probably be the most devastating thing that could ever happen. Yeah. So making, making sure I'm always nervous when he comes back from the eye doctor or, you know, the cardiologist, he even sees a podiatrist because he wants to make sure that his feet are, and that's not even anything that the, the FAA recommends that you do. He just <laughs> wants to be proactive. I love um, it. That his feet, you know, look okay. So I, I'm, I'm always nervous about things like that. Obviously I don't want anything medically ever challenged for him, but I mean, it's, it's, it can even come down to just the simple wording of, you know, early signs of cataracts or things like that, that, that pop up. So yeah, yeah, I would say the same. Yeah. That's, that's a really good point. I mean, so much of our nervous system gets affect, affected with um, um, high blood sugars and low blood sugars. Um, and then Samantha, I'm going to ask you this question. This is, I, I believe it's our last question. Um, 
I want to word this right. How can we people with diabetes support you as our partners? Am I wording mm-hmm. that right? Samantha? Um, I think definitely recognizing or having a conversation about burnout and understanding that it's probably difficult for the majority of us to talk about because of the guilt associated with it, especially if you have children too that are type one. Um, You know, we probably would have a hard time having that conversation, but keep asking the question and, you know, do things. I, I am, um, I'm a huge people person, but I, I also love to just go to a movie by myself. And so there are times where my husband can see when he walks in the door at night that I'm done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not even if it's just diabetes related, it, it's just children related yep. in general. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's, Hey guys, leave mom alone. You need something. Come ask me. He's yeah. watching their blood sugars. He, you know, takes care and feeds them. So I think if, if you don't have kids, it's recognizing that they probably still need to talk about it too. Fears, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always cautious to talk about my fears about, you know, his vision or things like that. Um, because I, I imagine that it's, you know, not something that you want to think about in your future. Yeah. So well, aside from that, you have uh, microphones and sponges, uh, kids listening to you like, what did what she tell dad? Have a vision? <laughs> no, not to you. I have diabetes too. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you do. You have to be aware of those things. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I love the, I love the uh, storytelling with the balance I hear between you and your partner. You know, that's, that's an amazing uh, duo and, and support, you know, and it goes both ways. I mean, I should uh, better uh, assist Tarika, you know, if she's tired of taking care of me and herself, you know, so I have to learn how to give and take as well. <laughs> that happens a lot. Like if she has a high blood sugar, I'll be like, hey, just add some points to my blood sugar. I'm a little lower, you know, <laughs> that works that way, right? <laughs> right. We try to share our blood glucose sometimes. Yeah. Try some, to give some over there when you're right. low. Divide it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just divide it a little bit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I think there's a, I think there's another, um, it's more of a comment. I would probably aim this towards, uh, I mean, actually everyone, uh, it says, uh, oh, okay. Sorry for Sam. It says that, were you aware there's a blood test for children that can see T1D markers to predict T1D? I saw this at a booth at a JDRF some a few years ago. I don't know if you heard of anything like this. Yes, actually our, um, so when our first daughter Vivian was diagnosed, she was diagnosed at two. Um, and her younger sister was, um, just a year old at the, at the time, or she was younger than that. I'm sorry. And, um, whenever she was di- diagnosed, I'm, I'm sure she's probably referring to trial net. There are a couple of her others out there now, but, um, we took our youngest daughter, Evelyn, when she turned one, they have to be in a year of age in order to do the, uh, it's, it's quite a bit of lab work that needs to be done. So we had her tested. Um, They typically tell you six, eight weeks for results. And I think they called us in four because they were freaking out that she was already type one because she had tested positive for, uh, I think it was four of the five autoantibodies that they shared. So we knew um, that she was going to eventually be positive. They predicted because of her dad being type one, her sister being diagnosed before the age of five, there was a lot of things in there that she would more than likely be uh, insulin dependent by the time she was five or by the time she was four. We made it a year past that um, and we just continued to monitor her. She started going to Vivian's uh, pediatric endocrinologist at about three years of age and we started running A1Cs um, and then we, we just checked her. We didn't go any further with trial net. Um, she was too young to be a part of any of the trials. Um, we didn't do the, the, I think it's called a GTT test um, because we were very familiar with type one. We weren't worried about her going into DKA. And when she was officially diagnosed, um, Dr. Ponder, he's an amazing, very well-known pediatric endocrinologist. That's who uh, actually diagnosed Jerry because he lived in Corpus Christi at the time. Wow. Um, he now sees 
Jerry's daughters for type one diabetes. Wow. So it's Aww. very full circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he, um, he, we have his cell phone number. We contacted him. A Paloma, um, glitter glucose was actually at our house at the time that it, that it happened. Wow. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So we, um, we just started her on long acting, giving her microdoses of that until she was fully insulin dependent, which only took about a month. So yes, we, wow. we are aware it's not for everybody. Not everybody um, is comfortable knowing those results because yeah. you're kind of throwing a shoe up in the air, yeah. wondering when it's going to come back down. And yeah. that, it didn't bother my husband and I, we wanted to know, and we were, you know, prepared for whatever the results would be. Um, yeah. yeah. And they have each other and they all three have each other. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. I mean that, that's a community and network uh, within itself, you know, <laughs> but uh, thank you for sharing that. The person that actually submitted that question said, yeah, that's the one I'm assuming you're uh, the trial trial net. Was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trial net. I had my yeah. twin do that too, actually oh, okay. when I was diagnosed. Cause yeah. I am a twin. Yeah, she's so a I twin. try to make sure she gets tested as well often. Yeah. yeah. She's she's clear though. She's good. <laughs> Not going when, when I say tested often, I meant A1C. Oh, yeah. A1C. Okay. That, that's fair. <laughs> but then. she did do trial net. Yeah. Um, I, I want to thank um I want to thank you guys so much. Uh Samantha, I, I really appreciate you sharing your story. You know, I'm sure so much people benefit from just the the story of day in and day out as mom, and then hearing, you know, a story from your husband. So thank you for sharing that. I, I want to acknowledge that. Um, and and Luis, thank you so much. I I really appreciate the kind words that you said about your partner inspired me to, you know, <laughs> think about my partner in a similar way. You know, I, I really <laughs> I really admire it and and uh, thank you both. I really appreciate it. Thank you thank guys you. for this amazing chat. Um, and beyond type one, thank you for this and everyone that submitted these uh, amazing questions. I'm gonna pass it to uh, Jordan. Y'all are great. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to all of you tuning in tonight. And thank you to this group for sharing their experiences and expertise with us. Such an amazing emotional conversation. I got a bit teary at certain moments. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but just such an important thing to talk about. So thank you all again. We learned so much. And, you know, we just can't thank you enough. Um, for all of you watching, we've got another community table coming at you next month on March 31st. So we're talking about misconceptions, misinformation, and misdiagnosis. It's uh, the March um, trifecta there. But um, you can register now to tune in at beyondtype1.org slash community dash table. And be sure to stay tuned into Beyond Type 1's channels for that conversation. And also, we're going to be publishing some learnings from this conversation coming up pretty shortly. So we're going to highlight some awesome, awesome takeaways from this amazing group. And we're super excited to do that. Once again, before we close out, just want to take the time to thank those who make this all a possibility. Community Table is presented by the ADA Beyond Type 1 Collab and the JDRF Beyond Type 1 Alliance and made possible with support from Abbott Diabetes Care, Dexcom, Lily Diabetes, Sanofi, Tandem, and Vertex. Thank you again to this group. You're all amazing. We're so thankful for all of you. And to all of you watching, we'll see you again next month at the Community Table. Good night, everyone. <laughs>